Good morning, it's Randy with Randy's RV Bible Study. If you're here today, thanks for joining me and, well, a few others. <laughs> I can't really say many others, but that's okay. Hey, this is my study. It's been my study for over 200 videos, I think, now. And I decided uh, to invite you into my study. And I thought that was something that God wanted me to do as well. Today is Thursday, October 17th, if I haven't said that. And I'm working into Exodus, almost out of Exodus. So join me now, with me now, please. And we're going to talk about your way. <laughs> your way, it ain't your way, it's God's way. And we're going to talk in depth about that. And I hope to make this as short as possible. Uh, because of uploading time and just to get the point across. So, getting into it now. Exodus uh, 35 and 34. Uh, the artisans are called by God. There's so much going on in here. The articles of the tabernacle and the tabernacle offerings are going to be presented. And then the artisans are called. And uh, cutting uh, jewel, uh, jewels, setting and carving wood and work and all kinds of manner for workmanship. And he has put in their heart the ability to teach in him. And Ahalabib, the son of eh, <laughs> is Shemak of the tribe of Dan. And he has filled them with skill to do all manner of work of the engraver and the designer. He has. This is God doing this. And the tapestry maker in blue and scarlet thread. Listen to this, artisans. Listen to these workers. And um, scarlet thread, fine linen, and linen, and the weaver of those who do every work and those who design artistic works. It's it's, it's great. And and I'm I'm not going to read everything, so I'm going to paraphrase here and we're going to jump into kind of a study here. And well, not kind of. It's it's a study. And Bezal L L <laughs> and a hula bit. You know what? I wish these names were easier. Really, I pray to God. I wish they were. And every gifted artesian in whom, this is 36, the Lord has put wisdom and understanding to know how to do all manner of work for the service of the sanctuary shall do according to all that God has commanded. God is equipping them. God is giving us the gifts. See, we, I think we have this. It's not our way. It's his way. We use our gifts for ourselves. We use our gifts for our sin. We use our gifts and talents. We think they're ours. We think everything is ours. We think we are belong to ourselves. We It's not about your way. I mean, that's what the study is. And then if you are interested, read on. And the people give more than enough. They, they're building the tabernacle. They make an ark of the testimony. They make gold lampstands, a showbread. This It's, it's amazing. Uh, the detail that is involved, <clears throat> making the altar, the incense, the anointing of the incense, the making of the court of the tabernacle, the making of the bronze laver, the making of the burnt offering, the materials they use, the making of the garments, the making of the ephod, the, it goes on and on, <clears throat> and uh, the pictures, making of the breastplate, etc. And the work, uh, it goes on for all the way to 40, where the tabernacle is erected and arranged. The work is completed, then they arrange and erect the tabernacle. Once you get into 40, you're out, and we'll get into Leviticus, and that's where we're going to run. That's where we're going to run to, man. I'm going to go on. But listen, this isn't our way. <laughs> and I just kept writing. I think I'm hurting my handwriting. I never wrote so much. Listen, in 1974, Burger King had a slogan. Have it your way. This was summed up to its rival Mickey D's with the emphasis on the pop culture and the individuality of have it your way. You're the boss and now it's you rule. And according to Google, I looked up the pop culture of 2024. This could be the, uh, the slogan of 2024. This is Google. This is a <laughs> pop culture could be, it's the end of the world as we know it, and I feel fine. Well, really, okay, that's interesting. Now, Burger King's with have it your way. Have it your way, it isn't your way. 
uh, it may be your way in your burger. And yes, you know, the customers used to be always right, but you rule. And it's interesting that it's in line with pop culture anyways. Uh, there's just some interesting things I find. So that's where uh, I'm going with this. Follow me, please. In, in ancient Egypt, the architecture, the pyramids, the columns, the columns, uh, the temples, the great Apostle Hall, dating back to 3000 BC and on up to 300 AD, these even these that long ago, that long they were used. The Sphinx, the great Sphinx of Giza, I'm sure that you've seen that, was 240 foot long and 66 foot high from the bottom to top of the head. Now, these represented things that all all these things were built to worship the sun moon and the stars the the sphinx represented the sun god or horus and the sphinx human head if you were represented that of pharaoh as a god king little g as a god king pharaoh was representing himself as god mankind is not god and they are worshiping sun, moon, stars. <laughs> and uh, the Sphinx is protecting the Pharaoh's tomb, who he believes he has an afterlife, is going to take all his worldly stuff with him, which is not going to happen with anybody. Astronomers believe that even the significance of the Sphinx itself, an appearance, is has a relation to the stars and the constellation. Can you imagine that? Now, these folks weren't dumb. And they were building these things um, to represent these gods and to in, in, in honor somehow of the constellation and astrology. I hope that you out there who call yourself Christians are not messing with star, moon, stars, sun, and astrology. We're going to find out why Deuteronomy clearly tells us not to do that. It's clearly in divination, divination and an abomination to the Lord. Okay? Now, this significance of the Sphinx, though, has this relationship to the star con con uh, constellations and the age of Aquarius. This is the dawning of the age of Aquarius, 60s, 70s, remember all that? Which they believe the Earth had a 26, the Egyptians mathematically are putting it together, I don't know. And the Mayans believe that there was a 26,000 year cycle that um, uh, by 2012, supposedly uh, every 26,000 years, the, uh, the eyes of the Sphinx, now get this, with a line with the constellation of Aquarius, which is a man's face, and that the rear of the Sphinx would align with Leo, the constellation Leo, which is the lion's body. The Sphinx, as you know, is a lion's body. Is that amazing or what? And the Mayan calendar had a 26,000 year, but we, you know, um, your uh, cycle claiming that the earth would shift on its axis from Pisces, the constellation, to Aquarius. Now, note, if you will, please, if the Earth's axis was to shift position at all, the, the inertial force produced in such an event would literally tear the Earth apart. It could be plunged into darkness and other, into uh, sunlight, if it even withstood that kind of uh, nonsense. Anyways, scientists believe, now, these are not Christians, Scientists believe that the Earth is 4.543 billion years old. Isn't that interesting? Because creationists believe that the Earth was 6,000 years old. No, or no more than 7,000 years. Creationists meaning people that believe that God created the world and the Earth in, uh, in seven days. Scientists, however, believe that it's 4... That four Point five forty three billion years old. I don't know how they came up with that figure, but uh, somehow they thought that was the year, that was the age of the earth, and that to me it's poppycock. I mean, come on, man. It's it's to disprove, in in my opinion, and uh, I, I am a high school dropout, so in my opinion, you, 
that's what you're getting. Sorry, uh, I got to be honest with you, but uh, uh, it, what you're getting is poppycock because how do they come out? You know, it, it, you're just you, you're receiving oh another Greek word uh, baloney because it's, it's baloney because what they're doing, in my opinion, is disproving the existence of God and creation. All in all, and isn't it interesting how NASA is always worried about the sun, moon, and stars? And you know, I worked on uh, Cape Canaveral as an environmental tech. Yes, I did. <laughs> as a dropout, as a high school dropout, I did many crazy jobs. I don't know, only the Lord could have. And walking those uh, areas, and I didn't even intend to talk about that, but it just reminded me of walking the old the SLCs. We used to call them slicks, one through fourteen. All those. All that stuff is still there. It's just garbage. All that stuff where we uh, rockets took off, you know, and all that. The Lord spoke to me was all oh, just to disprove God and try to find answers in the sun, moon, and stars. I'm not saying that space exploration hasn't done wonders and satellites haven't. <laughs> you know, there's there's a balance here. I get it, but uh, there's there's always some other facet to that, and and and. They're like we're gonna live on Mars, folks. We're not gonna live on Mars. I'm just saying it's not gonna happen. Uh, Lord's coming back before that. I'm, I, that's what I'm guessing. Uh, so interesting. The age of Aquarius is associated with the shift of the Earth, but but not just the shift of the Earth, but rather consciousness, a shift in consciousness. Now, if you will, uh, and we get in a spiritual aspect, a desire for uh, a desire for change, and also in the hip. In the hippie culture, they called it the New Age Movement. If you remember, this is all a religion. Uh, some say, say uh, starting uh, that the Age of Aquarius would be starting in, get this, the year 2020. I don't know if you all remember 2020, but that was also the pandemic, wasn't it? COVID happened in 2020. It's just interesting to me. Sun gods and astrological worship, as we see, have been uh, going on in many cultures. The Mayans, the Egyptians, the Babylonians. Great structures were fabricated. The sphinxes, the tombs, the pyramids, the obelisks were created in great detail. And... Erecting these structures and the essence to uh, you know, built, they built them to worship basically. An obelisk is really built for the sun god Ra. You know, again, here comes the sun, the moon, the stars. So that's what we get in Deuteronomy. This is serious for you guys on, in the astro uh, uh, astrology department. Deuteronomy seventeen two. Remember, I just want to remind you that God says He knows. He created all the stars and knows them by name. Deuteronomy 17, 2. If there be found among you within any of thy gates, which the Lord thy God giveth thee, man or woman who hath wrought wickedness in the sight of the Lord thy God in transgression, his covenant, and hath gone and served other gods and worshipped them, either sun, moon, or host, heavenly host, which is be the stars, star, host of heaven, which I have not commanded in it be uh, and old, well, told thee that thou hast heard it, heard of it, and inquired diligently, and behold, it is true and certain that such an abomination is wrought in Israel. Then shall thou bring forth that man or woman who had committed that wicked thing unto the gates, even that man or woman, and thou shalt be stoned. They shall stone them with stones until they die. This is how God feels about that kind of worship. Um, if Carol Ryder were alive today, <laughs> he'd been stoned to death. It had been, uh, if you'd been alive in Israel day, excuse me. God's seriousness, he's serious about this. If anything connected to worship in seeking to know some divine method of revelation through sun, moon, or stars... Uh, what's your horoscope, man? What's your, they they do this on Christian dating sites. What sign are you? What does it matter? Do you think that it, because I'm a cancer, I have certain personality traits? Again, I will have to use that old Latin word, baloney. <laughs> it's baloney. 
it's it's baloney. It's worship. It's divination is what it is. So we've accepted it, and we've accepted it even in our churches and Christian. Uh, of course, that's what's happened. The Egyptians, the Mayans, the Babylonians, enchantments, the sorcerers, Tower of Babel. My friends, it is all demonic is what it is and satan worship you know satan disguises himself as light now isn't that interesting stars are bright aren't they and he fell from the heavens just like a star from heaven only god through his word can reveal to you the future it's in his word the prophetic future. We were not seeing that at taking place. I'm not a prophet guy. I'm a teacher. <laughs> I'm not a prophet guy. I'm an evangelist at heart and a teacher. But you see it happening, unfolding before our eyes. He's told you. He's told us Jesus would come. Be, who Jesus is. He's told us Jesus would die on a cross and happen. He told us in 1948 this would happen with Israel. He's told us that Israel would be surrounded by seven countries which is happening he told we're at the end of the world not only christians are talking about it we're all excited as christians but people that don't know the lord the jewish people that say this is clearly the times of the bible you think folks you can't have it your way and we're going to get into that and that's what i want to get into only god does word can reveal past present and future Daniel speaks with the astrologers and magicians, the soothsayers, that they were hopeless and in error. In contrast, the temples, the pyramids, the, the obelisks, the sun god worship, all built and connected with astron astron astronomical zodical, zo zodiacal, <laughs> what's your zodiac sign, man? <laughs> Light and worship. So, when we contrast that with what's going on here in Exodus, the, 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 they came, listen to this, both men and women. I just took out bits and pieces. As many as had a willing heart. A willing heart. Do you have a willing heart? You know, God calls, commands all men to repentance everywhere. Are you willing to do that? You have to have a willing heart. God's not going to force himself on you. This is a great God we serve. You know, he loves us. He's the God. He's going to prove it. He's showing you here. He detests this, this worship of other gods, but he wants a willing heart. He's amazing. So, both men and women had a willing heart, bringing offerings of golds, necklaces, and jewelry. Remember the calf? They were bringing, bring me your gold and jewelry, and he will make a calf, you know. Uh, that was just interesting to me. Scarlet thread, fine linen, and goat's hair, rams, and badger, badger skins. Who's, who's the hunter of the badger? Oh, man, that's a rough one. As you know, badgers are very mean. Silver, bronze, acacia wood. Uh, acacia wood is like beautiful grain wood that's that's resilient to rot. It's all this great stuff. Stones for the ephod and the breastplate. Plate spices and oils for for you know incense and and uh, uh, you see how I'm trying to look at the look at the uh, parallels here. How they're using similar things to worship their sun gods. But it belongs to God is what I'm trying to get at. And gifted artisans, they spun yarn by hand. Rulers brought onyx stones for the ephod and the breastplate, spices and oils for light and for sweet incense. And the children of Israel brought free will offerings to the Lord. All the men and the women whose hearts were willing. Is your heart willing? <laughs> Bringing in materials for all the work commanded to be done, the people gave more than enough of this material and everything was done meticulously meticulously to the Lord's specs to his blueprints in obedience the length of the curtain these are these people remember were rebellious listen to what they got on board with the length of the curtains were the same the blue yarn the edges of the curtains were made with fine purple this represents uh, power dignity royalty linen class <coughs> excuse me, were made of gold, boards of acacia wood, uh, all the details contained in the making of the tabernacle, the ark, lampstand, table for the showbread, altar of incense, holy oil, bronze lever, wow, artisans, materials, offerings, blueprints, garments, curtains, breastplates, down to every detail, every detail, meticulously from the 
Lord. By God, for God, it's holiness to the Lord. And even engraved, holiness to the Lord engraved on a crown, reminding all that God needs to be worshipped in reverence and, his, and well, he needs to be worshipped in reverence. So our, your way, our gifts, our talents, our worship, our entire essence of being, folks, of being in truth belongs to, in truth, it belongs to the Lord. It's not your way. Our bodies are a temple and belong to Him as Christians. <laughs> because if you're not a Christian, you belong to Satan. You're a child of Satan and you're not a child of God. Everyone's a child of God. No, everyone was created in His image. To become a child of God, you must repent. You must turn from your sin. You must cut off the sin in your life. And you must turn towards God. And you must be born again. Well, we, as Christians, we have been bought with the precious blood. The price paid. The precious blood of Jesus Christ on the cross. Your will be done, not mine, Lord. Man-made gods versus the living God. The Egyptians, the Mayans, the Babylonians had their gods and their worship. And it's gonna it's gonna happen. See, it's a natural thing though. You're either gonna worship Satan or you're gonna worship the living God. You're either gonna walk down the wide path, the broad way, or you're gonna walk the narrow road. That's the you you're either gonna you're either gonna be found in the book of life your name or you're going to go to the lake of fire and it is your choice and God is showing himself see why do people worship that was my question why do people worship false God maybe you're asking that same question well, listen maybe some of these ideas I'll hone it down and we'll finish with some I'll conclude with some scriptures see because idolatry is easier than faith when we deify creation, we are worshiping that which we can see, taste, touch, measure. And potentially, we can have control over. We can have control of the universe. We can say with our, what is it? You're a cancer. What's coming in the future? Uh, what's your astrological sign? What zodiac sign are you? And it's just your personality. It's all divination. We can't tell the future. You don't know when you're going to die, and I don't either. But I know this. You're going to die, and I'm going to die. And I'm not laughing because it's funny, because it's only, it's just reality. But with God, what is seen, but, oh, but God, while he's not seen, he's clearly seen in nature. And where else? In our conscience, in the laws of, and that he's written in our heart. We know we know, we know, we know when we do wrong. We can sear our conscience, but we know when we lie. We know when we commit adultery. We know if we kill somebody. Why? Well, you got to get rid of the body, man. You got to chop them up in pieces and feed them to the pigs, something like that. Pigs will eat anything. I'm not giving you ideas here. I'm just telling you because your conscience is telling you you're doing something wrong. You know when you do something wrong. And that is in place from God. Our longing for immediate gratification, sex, drugs, rock and roll, man. Our temptations are, we want to be gratified and now an investment we have, I have an investment in this life, makes idolatry, not just tempting, makes it easy. We also want autonomy from God or from anything, not owning us, nobody owning us. We want to be individual. This is dawning the age of, I can do whatever I want. Age of Aquarius, have sex with whom I want. If you die, you love the one, love the one. If you can't be with the one you love, love the one you with. I mean, it's all come out in that age of Aquarius. Thanks, 60s, for that immediate gratification. Let's get high, man. Turn on, turn loose, turn off, turn loose. I don't know what Timothy Leary was talking about, but he was high on LSD all the time. Well, 
we want autonomy. We don't want owners. We don't. We want to own ourselves and not God own or have authority over us. And He alone is to be worshipped, and we must answer to Him. And that's so idolatry frees us from that. Frees us from the God who owns us. I'm gonna have adultery. No, I love this person. I'm gonna sleep around. I'm gonna live with this person because I don't. One or I want to be, I want to, I, E, I, lovers of themselves, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God in the last day. We shall see that. Well, false gods serve us only, but they don't serve us. They fail to serve us. And more importantly, they fail to save you. Only Jesus Christ can save you. It's not God's, it's not my way. It's, it's, it's uh, God's way. All right, finishing up, concluding with some scripture, Colossians 3, 5. Put to death, therefore, whatever belongs to your earthly nature. Sexual immorality, impurity, lust, evil desires, and greed, which is idolatry. Put it to death. What does that mean? Cut it off, kill it. You know, Jesus says, if your eye offends you, that you should pluck it out of your head. This is how he's telling you how serious this is. If your hand offends thee, you should cut it off. You'd be better off going to heaven maimed than going to the eternal lake of fire this is jesus words isaiah 45 20 says ignorant are the ignorant are those who carry about idols of wood who pray to gods they cannot see that they cannot see uh, you know or that basically sorry not see i said that wrong ignorant are those who carry about idols of wood who pray to gods that cannot save sorry save you that cross around your neck great you got a cross around your neck it's not saving you though that got a cross that's my thing but i'm living a life i'm living i'm doing my own thing but i got a cross saying i'm christian that's not a christian because you have a cross or you got a t-shirt that's got a cross that's not a christian you've given your life to christ as your God as your Lord, you have given him ownership. That's what it's gonna, that's what it entails. Jonah, I'm surprised Jonah had this to say. You know, I really, I don't know if I ever liked Jonah so much, but what a profound statement. Listen to this: those who cling to worthless idols turn away from from God's love for them. Wow, Jonah is that's such a. I don't know. Never heard such a great thing by him. Those who cling to worthless idols turn away from God's love from them. It's interesting when you pull out scripture that you, you'll, you'll see that. You're like, I never saw that before. And, and uh, Galatians, you can also take it out of context. I want to be, be beware. Galatians 4, 8. Formerly, when you did not know God, you were slaves to those by nature. By nature. Uh, who by nature are not God. So formerly when you did not know God, you were slave to nature by those who are not God. See, by nature, I remember those days. Just by nature, <laughs> I was slave to marijuana. You say marijuana is a sin? I am. Alcohol? I don't like alcohol. Sorry. I don't see the point. You know, my Christian dating site. Hi, I'm a cancer, and I'd like to go wine tasting. Well, go wine tasting. If that's your thing, do do it. I don't see how that benefits you for the kingdom. My, I smoke marijuana because I got anxiety. Okay, that makes no sense at all. <laughs> it really does. Anxi marijuana creates anxiety. Come on. I, I was an avid smoker, I know. All right, Revelation 9.20. It was. I'm now a child of God. Listen. The rest of mankind who were not killed by the plagues, Revelation 9.20, still did not worship. <laughs> they didn't stop worshiping demons. And idols of gold, silver, bronze, stone, wood. Idols and that cannot see, hear, or walk. Idols that cannot save you. Only Jesus Christ can save you. If you're not saved, <sighs> your name's not written in the book of life. You must repent. You too, if you, unless you repent, you too shall perish. You must be born again to see the kingdom of God. Listen, I'm Randy. I'm out. I've lost my time. It's almost 30 minutes. I can't believe it. I love y'all. That's why I'm here, uh, sharing with you my journey in the Bible. And uh, 
more importantly, <laughs> Jesus Christ, he loves you so much. He loved you to death. Okay? God bless you. Until tomorrow, hopefully. Lord willing. Take care.